aspects of the Sunnyside Energy Solar Project, land for the former landfill in Sunnyside. And various stakeholders will be sharing during the first part of the hour, and then we'll open it up to your questions. So please, as it goes through, write your questions in the chat. And Hannah Mitchell from Solar United Neighbors, who's hosting this webinar, she'll be monitoring that chat and we'll get to your questions at the end. Um, if For those of you who are calling in on your phone, we will offer time at the end for you to unmute star six and ask your questions then. So we wouldn't be here today were it not for Mayor Turner, who understands the importance of addressing climate change. We are proud that the city of Houston has a climate action plan in which this project is featured. A climate action plan is no small feat and it wouldn't have happened without the direction and inspiration of the city's chief sustainability officer, Laura Cottingham. So Laura, welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dory. Thank you, everyone who is on this call um, today that we get to virtually meet and talk about uh, what is the single project at the city of Houston that I am most proud of, um, the Sunnyside Energy Solar Farm. So Dory asked me to talk about why this is my favorite project. You're going to hear about the project. You've got a fabulous list of speakers for the rest of this uh, panel, but you know, this is my favorite project that I've worked on at the city of Houston, not just because it's something that my office has worked on for three years, and not just because the city of Houston has looked at putting a solar farm on this landfill for about 10 years, but because the community and the city have been struggling and grappling and working together to come up with a way to repurpose and revitalize this landfill for 50 years, right? When you think about the historic context of this, um, it's just amazing. And the fact that it's in the climate action plan, the fact that this would be um, clean, green, locally grown solar power is fabulous. And um, the potential to bring in an ag hub to bring in jobs, to bring in job training so that um, kids from the community and from all over Houston can come and learn about solar energy and be inspired to be in the renewable energy field is fabulous. And um, the amount of community input that we've had is just amazing. And uh, you know, I can't say enough about this project. Uh, earlier this week, we presented the lease agreement at the City Council Quality of Life Committee, which is kind of the, a very important first step in the official approval process. There are a couple more steps that will have to happen along the way. Um, I do want to let anyone know, if anyone has questions, they absolutely can um, come reach out to me, to my office. I'm sure um, Council Member Evan Shabazz as well. We are here to answer any questions anyone has about um, the city's role and how we put this uh, project together. It was part of a global competition to come up with ways to creatively use underused city property. And we had uh, applicants and designs from all over the world, but we picked this particular project because it had such incredible ties to the community, right? This is not um, something that the city wants to just do on our own. We want to do this because we hope that we're working hand in hand with the community and that it is something that the community is proud of and sees as reflective of what they want Sunnyside to look like. Uh, so with that, I will give it back to Dory. And again, please feel free to reach out with any questions. We are here to help. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Uh, next, I would like to welcome Councilmember Evan Shabazz, representing District D, in which this project is located. I first met council member, uh, the Councilmember at the community event held on the landfill last February. It seems so long ago. Thank you, Councilmember, for joining us tonight. Thank you so very much. This is so exciting. Makes me want to move to Sunnyside so that I can take advantage of that solar energy. This, this is really, really great. And as you said, it was back in February where we had the, the groundbreaking, so to speak, uh, to get started. 
And this has been a long, long year, um, you know, difficult year, certainly for everyone. But this is a bright, bright light, a bright light uh, as to what is going to come in the future. And I am so very excited. I thank you and I thank Laura. And certainly I thank the, the mayor, you know, for getting behind this project and all those that have been engaged in it. I just really, really give you kudos and just very excited. I saw the presentation on yesterday at the Quality of Life. I like what I'm, I'm, what I'm seeing and just so very excited to see it come all come to fruition. And thank you for this opportunity to uh, be able to say a few words, um, you know, just to let everybody know that I am as, just as excited as they are about it. And so thank you so very much. Thank you, Council Member Evan Shavaz. I would like to thank all the co-hosts um, for making this town hall possible, including Solar Unite, as well as, so we've talked uh, to Green Houston, the Climate Action Plan in the city of Houston and, and District D. I'd also like to thank Solar United Neighbors for hosting this webinar platform and to the Sunnyside Energy Trust, volunteers from the community who have been meeting bi-weekly to make sure this project benefits the community. And, and not listed here, but extra kudos to James Cargus of New Energy, who has been the backbone of making sure this goes smoothly as the lease gets ready to go before the city. So I wanna also say thank you to James. I hope you are all familiar with the good work being done by, uh, for Sunnyside by the Mayor's Complete Communities Initiative um, this former landfill located between Belford and Reed Road, east of 288, has, now has the opportunity to be transformed into a community asset. To speak to how it fits into the complete community Sunnyside vision, I turn it over to City Planner Manager Lynn Henson. And Lynn, we can't hear you yet, so you might be unmuted. I mean, you might be muted. And while you're waiting on Lynn, I'm going to say, you know, I go so back with this history. I remember my dad going there to the dump when I was a little girl. I would ride with him. So, I mean, this is just fabulous. And so while we're waiting on Lynn, I was just throwing yes. that in. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think the stories, yeah, the stories that can be told are many. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes, Lynn. Thank you. Yes. My apologies, my internet has been crashing on me all day, so I'm trying to have the phone on backup. So um, too many mute buttons. But thank you very much for having me this afternoon. I, I am Lynn Henson. I work in the planning department on the mayor's initiative and am really excited to be here because the community through the Complete, Complete Communities program has identified the solar farm as an important project to them. We have spent the almost the last year, we were interrupted by COVID a little bit, but we're still able to do public engagement to put together an action plan for Sunnyside. And the solar farm ranked high in the, in the, in the plan. In fact, um, the community stated that it would like to advocate for the project and the solar farm is mentioned in other areas under economy and jobs. I want to just note that Lindsay Williams is the planner in Sunnyside. I'm going to paste her information in the chat. If anybody would like to follow the project through Complete Communities, I will also post the link for letstalkhouston.org. You can always uh, connect with Lindsay. Um, if for any reason, if you don't have information directly to the solar project, solar farm, and we can connect you that way. So we're welcome everyone to participate, uh, not only following the solar farm project, but through complete communities and let's talk Houston.org. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. So in, 2000, in August of 2019, the Sunnyside Energy Team was awarded the opportunity to restore the landfill cover, bring true community-owned solar to Sunnyside, develop a sustainable aquaponic growing and training center, along with other community benefits, including job training in solar and agribusiness, 
We'll go over these aspects in more detail as part of this presentation. Over the last year, much has been accomplished, including the addition to the team of BQ Energy Development, working with Wolf Energy to co-develop the utility scale solar farm. We welcome Paul Curran, Managing Director of BQ Energy. Good evening, thanks, Dory. So the Sunnyside Energy Solution um, is really multifaceted. Its anchor project is to install a very large solar project on the landfill itself. Um, BQ Energy and Wolf Energy will be doing the development. Um, BQ Energy is a company I founded about 18 years ago, um, and I founded it right after I left Texaco and Chevron, um, doing an awful lot of work with my boss was in Houston the whole time. Um, at the time, I built a wind farm inside of an operating oil refinery, and it had never been done before in the world. And I thought this was a great idea. Um, frankly, within Texaco, that wasn't uh, something they wanted to replicate. So I went out and started a company looking around for brownfield and landfill sites where we could do renewable energy. Eventually, we added solar to the mix um, when it became a little bit more economic about a decade ago. Uh, but we really specialize in looking for old sites, landfills, brownfields, uh, those types of properties that we can redevelop um, with a special emphasis in um, you know, working with the communities. We've developed the largest solar farm on a landfill in the country right now in Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, we developed a windmill, wind farm actually on an old uh, uh, steel mill that had shut down decades ago. Um, that turbine that you're looking at on the right there is from that site. Um, but we need to, we've learned over the years that one of the things we need to do very well is to work with the community. And that's frankly why we're here tonight. And it's also why we're partnering with Dory Wolf um, on this. Dory has a tremendous amount of experience uh, in solar energy development, has also developed projects on Superfund sites, um, and obviously is, is very, very good at keeping in touch with the communities, um, something that's incredibly important as this will be the largest solar farm in an urban site in the country. Uh, it will also be the largest um, la landfill-based solar project in the country. So these are important projects uh, for the city of Houston and for the country as we move forward. Um, we started a little over six months ago in earnest, um, got organized before that. Um, and so far, we've completed a um, solar energy design uh, that's very conceptual, just to make sure we could fit it all on the site, how much and how big. We completed a, um, a frequently asked questions, which we update somewhat regularly. Uh, Dory can give you the link as to where you can see those questions and how you can get a little bit more information about it. That's really what we're here tonight for. Um, ERCOT is a, an acronym, but basically, it takes a long time to figure out how you plug in a, a large uh, electric power plant of this type. Um, so the, um, the process is of making sure you can safely interconnect a large solar farm into the existing grid uh, takes quite some time and it's quite an intricate and somewhat nerdy study, to be honest. The more important study for the community is that we'll be doing an awful lot of environmental permitting work. Um, this is a site that's been neglected for several years, several decades, really. Um, and so we started the process, actually we had some um, specialists from a firm called Golder Associates uh, out on the site over the last week or so, just beginning the process of literally getting the lay of the land. Uh, landfills are not supposed to have trees on them, not supposed to have a lot of uh, you know, weeds and vegetation. Uh, this one has it in tremendous amounts as, as anybody that goes near the site knows. Um, so we're gonna need to do some significant transformation of what's there while at the same time making sure that the environmental integrity of the facility uh, is maintained. Next slide, Dory. Um, so this is the first of two descriptions of the project that you'll see, and Dory's gonna to touch on the second one, but effectively um, we're gonna be doing two projects that you'll think of as one when we're finished, but um, from a couple of different points, you'll see two different reasons for them. This is the utility scale project down at the bottom. And I direct your attention to a little trapezoid kind of shape uh, right above the, uh, the dark box in the middle. And Dory will be talking about that in a second. Very good, Dory. Um, the, um, the solar array for the utility project will be installed in the areas that you can see shaded in in the bottom. Um, it'll be about 50 megawatts of power. And that'll be somewhere about five or 10,000 homes, depending upon how much uh, uh, energy conservation is done over the coming years, but but at least 5,000 homes worth of, of energy, electricity. It'll be about $70 million in capital costs, and that will all be furnished, uh, furnished by private sector companies. 
Construction, we're hoping, will be completed in 2022, started in 2022 as well. Um, the city of, Union, of Houston will be our landlord. Uh, they've been a tremendous project supporter as well, but we'll be leasing the land from the city uh, for 25 to 30 years. Um, we'll be talking a lot as we go forward here about opportunities for local contractors. It just is common sense that we'd like to hire locally um, and we'd like to train people locally so that um, not only can we get the best workers, uh, but we get the most reliable workers. Uh, bring them in from out of state just takes no sense in a city like Houston, of course. Um, in addition to that, you know, we look with pride on our projects when we've trained people. Solar energy is going to be a big business in the coming years. It makes an awful lot of sense when we train people. They can then go on to, to start up their own businesses and do other things in the solar energy industry as it grows in the coming years. Um, as I mentioned, there'll be a, a second part of this, which is the community scale project. And I'll let Dory talk more about that now. Thank you, Paul. While the utility scale farm will take up most of the 240 acres, as Paul said, the northern section will be allocated for the two megawatt community solar array and the AgriHub training and growing center. We have plans to bring additional benefits to the community, including discount renewable power for 500 qualifying Sunnyside residents, solar battery and um, uh, solar battery backup for the neighboring Sunnyside Community Center, and an electric vehicle charging station, and a living labyrinth. And we'll hold more information sessions on these offerings in the future. But for this evening, I would like to touch on the community solar array. If you um, if you own your home and it has a good roof for solar and you want to invest in solar, great. Consider joining one of the Solar United Neighbors solar co-ops to benefit from group purchasing and expert guidance. But if you rent, if your home is too shaded, um, if you might be moving soon within the center point uh, territory, you, or if you say you want to just start with a panel or two, you don't want to do a whole array consider becoming a scriber owner of the Sunnyside Community Solar Array. And it, you just, you own a couple panels, it, it, uh, the equivalent of a couple panels in this array. By owning a piece of the array, you will receive credits on your electric bill that help defray the cost of the subscription. And you will get the benefit of any federal income tax credit just as if it was installed on your own home. Similar to the solar co-op process, the subscriber owners with help from Sunnyside Energy team will go out to bid and the selection committee comprised of the subscriber owners will with guidance from the team select the installer. We are still working out the details and as you will see in further slides, construction cannot begin until the restoration work is done on the landfill cover. But you can join the waiting list by signing up at solarunitedneighbors.org backslash Sunnyside and I've put that link in the chat and I'll put it in again. As a reminder, uh, keep your questions coming and, and enter those in the chat as well. So that's a very short description. And again, we can have more info sessions as we get closer to actually signing on subscribers. But in the meantime, uh, allow me to introduce the trust, a trustee of the Sunnyside Energy Trust, the vice president of agriculture and founder of RST Biosciences, Robert Harding. And Hello, Robert, everyone. Oh, so happy to be here today um, to talk about AgriHub. Uh, it's an integral part of the project. It's, uh, it's, it's designed to do two basic things, engage the community and support urban farmers in the, in the area. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Next slide, please. Uh, we also plan to produce uh, on a commercial scale, fresh organic vegetables for the community and surrounding area uh, as part of a, a, a program to train the surrounding area's farmers in vertical farming. Urban farming is, uh, is gonna be very big in the future and it's a great opportunity for local people to get involved in uh, something that can really help the community in several different ways. Uh, circular, it's all based on something called circular farming that our company, RST Bioscience developed and it's gonna revolutionize where we farm in urban centers. That's very efficient and produces fresh organic, organic local vegetables. Next slide, please. The other part of it is to engage the community and we'll be doing that in several different ways. There'll be classes, cooking classes, lectures, seminars, workshops, book signings. All these are to educate the community about food 
and agriculture and how it applies to uh, the new age urban environment and new entrepreneurs that will be created in this new industry as it begins to blossom. Uh, next slide, please. So it's all based on something called circular farming, as I mentioned earlier, which is a great way to farm and it's very environmentally friendly. It will also result in a more profitable business for farmers. We plan to create entrepreneurs in our region uh, that are doing urban farming and they'll be supported by our agri hub in terms of um, many different things that technical support for the farming techniques, um, training, infrastructure support, any refrigeration, transportation, logistics, even marketing. There'll be an opportunity for them to market through us and value added processing of their products to give them more shelf life, give them more value, make their operations more profitable. So we plan on raising up entrepreneurs and creating jobs in the area of the Ag Hub as we create young urban farmers that uh, are gonna lead the industry of agriculture into the future. Next slide, please. So our, our circular farming technology creates 10 revenue streams that are not traditional and will actually make these young urban farmers more profitable than their, uh, their contemporaries uh, uh, doing traditional farming methods. So we're very excited about using our technology to help lift up the, the Sunnyside community. Um, we've, we have farms in the area already and we'll be building more farms that all be supported by the ag, Agri Hub in this area. And it's gonna be a wonderful marriage of public private partnership and an opportunity for the community to really get involved in their own health and education and nutrition. Thank you. Excellent, thank you, Robert. So the main motivation of this town hall is to make sure the community gets their questions answered before we bring the lease for the utility scale solar farm to the city council for their approval. To that end, Paul, would you mind going through a few more details and the next steps? Sure, thank you. Um, so one thing I should mention is the next few slides we'll be showing, we've got a couple of pictures of solar farms that are significantly smaller than the one we'll be building in Sunnyside. Um, but it gives you an idea of kind of the way they look and a little bit of the feel. Um, generally speaking, solar farms are the safest and most productive way to reuse landfills. Um, this is a great idea that the city, you know, Lara and the team under the mayor have kind of um, started up. The, um, the deal here is that we will be um, putting forward a, um, um, a solar farm on top of the landfill surface. Um, very little will be done to disturb the surface. We'll be doing some grading work that will um, have an additional uh, amount of uh, materials uh, brought in to kind of smooth things over. You know, we would love to be building on something as smooth as a, uh, a pool table, but um, the sunny side landfill is far from that. Um, we'll be developing it over the coming years and I'll show you a little bit more, but the layout will be, you know, solar panels put into straight roads. Um, and from the community, you'll see some of it from a distance, but the farm, but the uh, fencing around the site will be um, largely obstructing the view of it. Next one, Dory. So the, the, the one thing that's obviously very important is that this is a landfill. Um, there's, you know, there's garbage buried out there. Old, you know, issues of the Chronicle from the 1960s are out there, you know, Jimmy Wynn baseball cards, all sorts of uh, material that was buried in the 1960s is buried out there. And additionally, there's been some trees that have grown over time. Um, and, and those are, have been uh, volunteer trees. Nobody ever planted one. And as I say, uh, that's something that is not best practice in a landfill management type of thing. So we will be um, taking the trees down um, over time. Um, we can replant other trees in other locations, but the trees um, that are there are very low quality and not able to be um, sustained. They also block the sun from our uh, solar panels. We'll have significant erosion control measures in place. Uh, basically, we'll leave the root system of those trees there, and then we'll be planting grass on the surface so that it'll look eventually um, like a um, the type of field you're seeing right now. Uh, that one happens to be in Vermont. Um, and we'll also make sure that we'll have um, bioretention features to manage any type of rain um, that uh, would be you know, running off of the surface. Um, one of the unusual features of the site as it exists today is that there's a number of very small ponds that have sprung up over time. Um, we'll be managing those as well, likely filling them in. 
um, and working through that with the agency known as the TCEQ or Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. Um, that process is quite rigorous, uh, especially with a landfill that has um, had some you know, lack of maintenance over the years. We expect that'll take us most of next year to go through that process with the TCEQ. Next one, Dory. So this is the, um, uh, just an image of the site, by the way, um, uh, from the, um, the east side of the site. Uh, we sent a couple of drones up over a couple of weeks back. Um, we will be doing some chipping and grading, as we say here. And, um, and you know, this is the first of what we expect will be many public meetings, uh, kind of advising people of what will happen before it happens. Um, outside of the fence, um, you'll probably see very little of it. Um, there's very little construction work that has to happen. Um, along the road there to the left, you can see a couple of power lines. Um, we'll literally be running a power line from where the trees are over to there to route the power away. And that'll be most of the community impact from outside of our site. There'll be some traffic, obviously, during construction, which we'll have to get um, you know, community input to make sure we understand exactly that we don't tie up all the traffic on Belford for you know, a long time. Equipment deliveries will be made, um, you know, uh, using public roads as well. So those types of surface will all, or subjects will all be addressed as we go through the permitting process. Next one, Dory. Electrical interconnection. I mentioned before, it is a um, uh, it's kind of a nerdy process, um, and it's very detailed to make sure that if you're going to inject power into a uh, power line that exists already, that you're not going to overload it in any way. Um, you know, it takes common sense to take a look at this, though. Most renewable energy projects in the state of Texas are out in the West, maybe about by Amarillo or Waco or such. The, the city actually buys power from a solar farm that's a few hundred miles away. Um, it, it takes a, a difficult congestion study to make sure that you can get all that power east where people in Houston need it. Um, in this case, we're going to go counter, uh, counter flow, if you will. Um, this will be a, a electrical generation facility right smack dab in the middle of Houston. So from an electricity point of view, on the day that Houston needs power the most, which is typically around the 15th of July when it's hot as all get out, uh, we, that's the day we actually make the most power because it's when it's hot as all get out, it's sunny as all get out. So that's a, a, a really nice match from us. I've said it often, I believe from a solar energy point of view, this is probably the best site that anybody could have ever imagined uh, for uh, renewable energy in the state of Texas. Uh, it's a great property from this point of view. It's going to take a lot of work to get it to the right place, but we're really very uh, pleased and proud. We take very seriously the responsibility of making this get done right. Next one, Dory. So this is when we're going to do it, um, and it's going to take some time, but, um, but it's going to be done right. Um, as uh, Lara and Dory have both said, and, and Councilman Shabazz, um, the um, City Council lease uh, approval, we hope, will be next month. Um, we've completed most of the initial design work already, but um, we'll be doing a little bit more of that, filing for interconnection with um, the state of Texas and with Centerpoint uh, in December. Um, we'll be starting the permitting process, and we've already retained a contractor who can help us through that um, probably in January. Most of next year, we'll be focusing on those two things in addition to looking to sell power and do a lot of other you know, project planning, getting financing lined up, a lot of, a lot of things that are very important, but commercial. Uh, and then finally, commercial operation, what we're expecting is obviously after construction, but will be a little over two years from today. Um, that's a pretty aggressive schedule. Um, we're up to it, and we think it'll be very important to meet that schedule so that this uh, renewable energy showpiece can really be uh, put into operation and then replicated in other communities throughout the state of Texas. Dory, I think the next one is mine. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. As Paul noted, this project will infuse 70 million of private capital into the Sunnyside area, along with local jobs and training opportunity. In addition, there'll be an annual, annual monetary benefit to the community from the project to be managed by the Sunnyside Energy Trust. And I have mentioned the trust is a group of volunteers from the community who have been meeting bi-weekly throughout this year to make sure that the Sunnyside project is beneficial to the community. I am honored to introduce the president of the Sunnyside Energy Trust, better known as Honorary Mayor Hines. Hi, good afternoon. Blessed be to God. First, let me extend my personal 
Um, thanks to our Honorable Mayor Celeste Turner for his support to this project, Councilmember Carolyn Evans Shabazz, our panel guests, and others. As Honorary Mayor of Sunnyside, it is my great pleasure to welcome you and to share why Sunnyside Energy Trust Board and I, as president, are excited about owning a historic, first of its kind, community solar farm in Sunnyside. I'm born and raised in Sunnyside, which opened in 1910 and planted in 1912 by H.A. Tones Brothers. It's located south of downtown in the oldest African-American community in Southern Houston, formerly known as Black Wall Street and the Baby River Oaks. In the 70s, there were over 800 businesses and the community was booming in oil and gas. It's been 30 years since the old landfill has been closed on the 240 acres of land near Belford at Wood Street near 288. With the 50 megawatt solar array that we have been provided by Shell MP2 Energy, we can create clean environment, not like with the fossil fuel. Sunnyside Energy Trust is a nonprofit trust with a board of eight trustees elected for and by the community. We participate uh, earning funds. We anticipate earning funds each year from our annual payment from the solar farm. The board decides how to best reinvest the funds back into the community. First, we'd like to offer cheaper electricity to seniors and low income and others. Second, we'd like to hire the community to train and install solar panels at local community college, starting with women, youth, and adults. Third, we are food desert. Our plans are to grow our own food and eventually creating our ag hub. Sunnyside Energy Solar Forum, when completed, would be the largest urban community solar project in the country. Thank you for joining us on tonight. Hope to hear from you soon. God bless. Thank you, Mayor Hines. And so to summarize, uh, before we get to the Q&A, the Sunnyside Energy Projects, and it's really multiple projects, right? We've got the utility scale solar farm, the community solar, the agri-hub, and more. They offer unique benefits to the citizens of Sunnyside, including the restored landfill cover with bioretention areas, the solar installation training and job opportunities, the discount power for qualifying Sunnyside residents, the opportunity to become a subscriber owner in the community owned solar array, battery backup for the Sunnyside Community Center, EV charging station at the Sunnyside Community Center, the AgriHub training and growing facility, and yearly contributions to the Sunnyside Energy Trust for community improvements. So with that, uh, we'd like to thank our hosts again and open this up for questions. So Hannah, have they been keeping you busy? Do we have a number of questions? Yeah, so I'll start off with um, the first question about, since we were, you were just talking about all of these different um, projects that are interconnected, could you describe who, who will manage the community solar project? That was one of the questions. Good, good question. So the community solar project will be owned and it'll have a holding company, an LLC, that is called right now Sunnyside Community Solar. And that will have a manager and the manager as determined by, you know, overseen by the trust, but the manager will manage that array. Okay. And we have a couple of questions about air quality. So while you were describing, um, or I, I think it was, uh, BQ Energy was describing um, the process for landfill restoration. Someone is asking what will be done to address the air quality once location is, uh, is 
once the trees and vegetation are removed from the location, um, and will there be EPA and TCEQ grade air quality monitoring systems in place um, to monitor any pollution that will escape from underneath the cover? Yes, Paul, would you fact, um, this is Paul Curran. The, um, the landfill has been closed for almost 50 years, so it's very unlikely that there will be much um, remnant methane or other gases that will be coming out when we build. However, um, it's normal in our landfill construction practices that we do monitor on the site very close to what we're doing for methane. Um, and in this case, uh, given that we're very close to the community, um, we'll be having perimeter monitoring as well over by the community center um, to make sure that there are no you know, excess amounts of uh, methane that could possibly be emitted from the, uh, the site during construction. Um, those are relatively easy to install and frankly, we'll probably leave it there for some time. Uh, we expect there'll be absolutely you know, non-detectable levels of you know, no levels of methane uh, emitted during the project, but um, you know, we'll be monitoring that. And, and our goal is to do the restoration with minimal invasive work, right? We'll be chipping the trees yeah. in place. We won't be pulling up the roots. Right. And then Paul, while you're, while you have the mic, um, someone else had a question about um, digging water retention ponds and sort of what the plan is to handle runoff. Yeah, we will have some retention ponds. You know, it, it's surprising to me that there are so many ponds actually on the site that have formed naturally over time. I, I frankly have never seen that before on, on a landfill, but um, we'll look for a place off the landfill surface, um, basically to one corner or another um, to put such ponds. Um, you know, TCEQ will not want us to put a great deal of weight above the, the waste materials. Um, one of the purposes of a landfill is to make sure that you don't get water percolating through the waste materials and going out into the community. So we will have retention ponds. Um, those retention ponds will be more to the side um, where there's um, less or hopefully no waste uh, around. Uh, and those ponds will obviously be lined so that they can't le leach out into the community. And, and I believe in our proposal, we added bioretention. So it's a, a, a layer of not a, just a, a hole or a swale, but filled in uh, thoughtfully and engineered to abs absorb naturally the mm -hmm. slow down the water and absorb it um, before it runs off, yes. Right. And Dory, this is a question for you um, and probably for Sun. <laughs> so this person is a homeowner in Sunnyside who wants solar panels on their roof. And they're asking about um, whether or not they have to belong to a solar co-op to get energy from the solar farm. All right, good, good and complicated question. So bear with me, right? If you want to put solar on your home, nothing is stopping you. You can go reach out to installers tomorrow, get some quotes and decide to go solar, right? So a co-op, if you became part of a co-op, and it's just a, a temporary, you, you join an active co-op, you go solar, and then the co-op disbands. So it's not, a, uh, it's not an ongoing, it just helps for group purchasing. That just makes it easier for the homeowner so they don't have to do the work of going out to different, getting different bids. So a co-op can make it easier to go solar, but you don't have to wait, you can do it on your own. If you put solar on your home, while well, here we're, you know, we have another, what, one, two years before we're gonna be able to start generating power from our community solar array. If you go solar now, and say you put on a small array, and that doesn't meet all your needs, my understanding from our community solar array communication so far is you'll be able to do both, have solar on your home and if you need more solar, be part of the community solar array. So it won't preclude you from being part of the community solar array, but you may not need to if you have enough solar on your home to meet your needs. Was that clear enough? If you would like to be part of a solar co-op though, I am going to drop a link into the chat and you can sign up to, to be notified as soon as the next co-op is open in the Houston area. Thank you, Hannah. And then I muted myself, sorry about that. All right, more questions. 
Um, all right. So this is a question for Robert. Um, the so this person says the agricultural hub um, that will include a farm is close to two freeways, and um, these freeways contribute to air pollution. And so this is another sort of air quality and air quality question. So how is this going to be monitored? especially considering that you're growing food and having a lot of people coming to the facility? Well, um, our farm's gonna be indoors for the most part, either in greenhouses or shipping containers or uh, some type of building. So um, we're, we're urban farmers, so we farm inside to avoid the, the complications created by uh, climate change and the weather around here, because it can be so destructive. We're trying to insulate ourselves from that and have a more resilient food system by making sure that we protect our food by not exposing to the elements of the weather. Great. Including the carbon from the cars that come down the freeway. Um, I'm not sure if there's anyone who's talking about STEM on the call. I don't think Ephraim is here, but um, this is a question for whoever would like to take it. So the students that have been in, involved in STEM programming, will they be able to have space on the farm and property to test uh, their inventions or participate in events? Well, community education is going to be a very important part of the AgriHub um, institution. We're going to host uh, community nonprofits to bring programming into the hub as the trust deems appropriate. We're going to certainly uh, promote uh, educational programs and workshops and classes, as I mentioned earlier, so that people are able to really um, educate themselves about how important it is to have proper nutrition and, and provide them access to it through the, the facility itself and the farms we're gonna create and support locally. Great, and um, let's see, we have a question about pricing, but um, I'm not entirely certain. Do I have the ability to unmute? Okay. I, I saw that question and I would like to I think the question is, how is it going to be comparable investing as a subscriber owner in the community solar versus putting it on your own home, right? I think oh, that's, if that's the gist of the question. Um, and was it asked by state, Tracy? And you're here, Tracy, with, did I get the question right? How, uh, yes, this is Tracy, how you doing? Doing well, Teresa. Uh, the question would be how, in comparison to the electricity that's presently on the market that people are already paying for versus what the power would be sold for from the farm. All right, and again, this is a complicated project, so I'm gonna break it down. And Paul Kern, I'm not gonna necessarily answer the utility scale, right? That's gonna be wholesale, it's gonna be competitive. But on the community solar array. Um, we're still negotiating those terms um, with most virtual net meet, with most net metering buyback plans. And we have whole workshops on this. Uh, Hannah's our expert. The price varies depending on um, the different retail energy provider that you go with. The, what we were, uh, we, we have been negotiating is probably a little higher in cost uh, than maybe the best discount price you could find out there on the market. Um, but it's for the 100% renewable and, it, and it's good. But part of that, so say, uh, I think we were talking 12 cents, you know, but it's gonna vary. We're not get that, we're not finalized yet on that price. Um, but for the sunny side, for the company that does offer this buyback plan for sunny side, we have been asking them to provide a discount uh, power price for the senior citizens as Mayor, Turn as Mayor Hines has requested. And that would be more like uh, 10 or 11 cents. So something less than uh, to get that renewable power. But, but electricity prices are complicated and uh, you will find a cheaper price of electricity. I can guarantee you, right? You'll be able to go market. So it is, it is knowing that your power is going to be local and it's going to be clean and that has value that we're going to try and make as competitive as possible. 
and uh, James Cargus, I am allowing you to talk, so go ahead. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, Dory is absolutely correct. I just want to point out one new, new uh, nuance there is that not everybody can get the lowest rate because power companies often do a credit check. And if your credit's not so good, you pay a premium. And so we're working hard so that the Sunnyside Energy Trust can help with that uh, credit history so that people who normally would get charged a little extra because their credit's not so great um, can get that lowest price is actually advertised out there. Um, that's a nuance, but that's also an important element of energy pricing. Thank you, James. And James, do you want to just say who you are for folks who, who hadn't heard? Yeah, I'm uh, James Cargus I'm with New Energy, and um, I'm a proud, proud member of the uh, Sunnyside Energy team and just an energy nerd helping out. Oh, and he's, as I mentioned earlier on, he helped, uh, he's been greasing the, uh, I don't know what, anyway, he's been making it smooth going to get this lease in front of the council. We couldn't have done it without you, James. Um, All right. I thought, yeah, go yeah, ahead. We have another question here for, likely for Lara. Lara, if you're still here. So how can we support the city of Houston and its climate change initiatives? And if she doesn't come on, I want to promote her working groups. If, yeah, there you go, Laura. I'm not sure, my internet is cutting in and out, so I only hear like every other, every three words of what everyone is saying. Oh no! <laughs> but, <laughs> um, how can you support the Climate Action Plan? We have an open call right now for folks to join the working groups. Because so the Sunnyside landfill project that we're talking about right now is fabulous, and I want to encourage everyone to take part in that. But there is something involving climate change for everyone, every individual, every business, every student, every school. So I encourage everyone to go to our website, which is greenhoustontx.gov, and sign up for a working group. We will be talking about materials management, which is recycling and the circular economy. We'll be talking about uh, renewables, but also hydrogen and carbon capture and uh, energy innovation. We'll be talking about buildings and transportation and climate equity and how we can use youth. There's an incredible climate youth movement afoot, believe it or not, even here in Houston. How do we tap into that energy and start implementing the projects in the plant? And I think that's it for our questions. Wow, uh, good questions. And thank you for your participation tonight. And if you haven't already, uh, please join our wait list. Um, this is the Sunnyside wait list and, and the link is here on the slide. If you either want to get training, you want discount power, you want to become a subscriber owner, or just want to volunteer to help get the word out, because we're going to need to, you know, we're going to need to knock on doors and let people know about this opportunity. Uh, you can sign up here at soulunitedneighbors.org backslash Sunnyside. And that's it. Have a wonderful evening. And thank you Night all. Night Take all. care.